This video is about the clues at Oleante Tambo in the Sacred Valley of Peru regarding the lost ancient art of stone softening. Clues that are proof that the softening of granite, rhyolite, andesite, and diorite is physically possible. Oleante Tambo is not as famous as nearby Machu Picchu, Sacsayhuaman, and Tambo Vanchai, but it is the one unique site that gives us the clues that all of the other polygonal megalithic sites do not offer. Oleante Tambo was under construction by its original unknown ancient architects when, for some undetermined reason, everything stopped. Thus, it's an in-progress dichotomy of the lost ancient stonework art form, and the linear process is right there for us to study. There are several clues here that show us positively that it is possible to soften certain types of igneous rock, and several clues as to how the process was done. Here are the clues. First, the tired stones, as they are referred to, that are on the delivery path from the quarry that is six miles to the northwest. They are, as you would expect, all perfectly straight cut. These are the new deliveries. Second, the inline and ready stones on the other side. They've been lifted from one side all the way to the other side to be prepared. They are still straight cut. This is where the process begins. Third, the twisted or bent stones. There are three in particular here that are twisted or bent. Aren't these stones such an obvious clue? Fourth, the dented stones. These show that the processing trays included a holding dimple to keep the stone from sliding around as the stone was lifted and lowered into the softening solution. Fifth, the cut stone. This rock has a cut line from a wire saw as if it had been as soft as clay at the time it was being cut. Sixth, the fitted stones. There are stone walls here that are complete and fitted to an excellent degree of quality, undeniably the most incredibly fine stonework in the world. And lastly, there are outcrops of bedrock that are in the way and under the softened and molded stones. Why couldn't this have been softened and removed too? Well, the other six clues help to explain that. So. There are seven different kinds of clues, hinting as to how this amazing stonework was done. Rhyolite stones were saw cut in the quarry, hauled down one mountain and up another. Then these stones were transferred from the sleds into the processing trays. Rounded positioning slots were shaped into the corners of the stones so that they would not shift in the processing trays, and these trays were used to lower the rock into the soaking tank where the quartz rich stones were soaked in a plant-based softening solution and a low intensity sonic vibration that, given time, softened the rhyolite stone to a consistency somewhere between clay and whale blubber. Once the stone had softened to the perfect consistency, it would then be placed onto the cutting table. Time is now ticking as the stone is slowly starting to harden. Wire saws and sonic saws would be used to slice up the soft stone into the next needed shapes and then deliver the pieces to their desired locations. Once placed into its desired location using a sonic clamp, the stone was steered using a sonic soft stick and also pressed into position manually. In this softened state and using these sonic tools, the stone would settle in to the exact fit and then be left to harden back to its original natural status over time. To me, it's obvious that certain quartz-rich igneous stones could be, can be, softened and then easily cut and fitted into these amazing walls. And the ancients couldn't put the bedrock into the tank, so it couldn't be softened, thus it was left behind. This is why it's still there, right in the way, in several places. The proof is right there in front of our eyes. Softened stone plopped and shaped into place onto the bedrock. To summarize, the temporary softening of certain types of stone is possible, obviously. These stones were softened and vibrated together until they fit perfectly. If we can put a man on the moon and make smartphones, then we can figure out the softening and sonic technologies that made this stonework possible thousands of years ago. All of the best clues are at Oliente Tambo. 
I hope that you found this video to be interesting. My previous videos about Amazing Peru are available on my channel. Please like or share. Thank you.